So, hello everyone. Initially, it is a TED talk with the stage and the crowd, <laughs> but uh, in this time, it's not possible. So, I like the work of Alexandre Duclos a lot, and uh, he shoots many videos in front of webcam without a PowerPoint or anything else. He just explains uh, many different things. So, I hope you'll find that it's a nice, uh, that this format nice enough. I want to talk about liberalism. When did it emerge? What is liberalism? How did it evolve? Today, what is European liberalism? So, I can't thoroughly discuss this question, but I encourage you to get further information with the reference in the description of this video. So, to begin, the lib liberalism supposedly appeared in the 19th century as a social philosophy school of thought. However, before the term was coined, one could already see the notion uh, appear in Pericles' funeral speech. There were already some of liberalism principle, uh, core principles, such as the free place of intelligence. But the first system's approach has been attributed, uh, first system theory has been attributed to John Locke, principally in their two treatises of government published in 1686. I will not quote the original text, but instead I will quote Liberalism and Social Action, LSA, by John Dewey, published in 1935. So, uh, let's recall John Locke, let uh, us recall what, who is John Locke. John Locke is a famous philosopher, known sometimes as the philosopher of Glorious Revolution, Revolution of 1688 in England, which also impacted Ireland and Scotland. He certainly had inspired most of the Bill of Rights in 1689, which ended of the Glorious Revolution. He wanted people to be free, equal, and joyful. Now let's read John Locke's vision, John Locke's vision as described by John Dewey in LSA. The outstanding points of Locke's version of liberalism are that governments are instituted to protect the rights that belong to individual prior to political organization of social relations. So it's very important and here are the foundations of the first theoretic liberalism. It can also be referred as Lockean liberalism. According to French philosophers like Rousseau, Montesquieu and others, this concept had been applied in the United States Declaration of Independence in 1776, named USDI, and the Declaration of Rights of Man and of Citizens in 1789, GDHC, Declaration des Droits de l'Homme et du Citoyen, which, puts, which put natural rights, such as the right of life, liberty, property, safety, etc., on the paper. So it's really important, and to fix the spirit, the USDI and DDHC are some constitutions. So, let us recall the definition of constitution given by Wikipedia. Sorry. A constitution is an aggregate of fundamental principles or established precedents that constitute the legal basis of policy, organization, and other type of entity and commonly determine how this entity is to be governed. Still today, some of their principles are using in our constitutions. So I think it's important and let's see the second part, the Industrial Revolution in 1850 uh, and liberalism. We want to see how the liberalism has evolved with the growth of industry. During Locke's time, there were no industrial production. He was interested in already possessed property. The production of wealth is questioned later, later on, at the beginning of the industrial expansion precisely. With steam engine and economic improvements, the economic agent was more interested in the production of wealth than in possessions. Position. It was the beginning of the economic version of liberalism. John Locke emphasized the natural feature of these rights. According to him, all human beings must be free and have rights and liberties. But in less than two centuries, freedom took another meaning. So let's quote John Dewey in LSA 2. 
enough. In the end, the effect was to subordinate politics to economic activity, to connect natural laws with the laws of production and exchange, and to give a radically new significance to the earlier conception of reason. Here, one can see the first big evolution of liberalism, local liberalism. The classical economic liberalism is based on free economic processes, through free market, with the guidance of an invisible hand. Here, it seems that a pre-established economic harmony can emerge naturally when the marketplace is free and competitive. According to Wikipedia, a market is one of the many varieties of systems, institutions, procedures, social relations and infrastructures whereby parties engaged in exchange. It can be said that a market is a process by which the prices of goods and services are established. I will not spend more time on the concept of invisible hand, first coined by Adam Smith. I will just say that John Dewey showed us how Adam Smith is badly understood, and I encourage you to look at page 7 8 of LSA. The link is in the description. How do we interpret Smith? It is really different than usual. So, let let question uh, nowadays liberalism and uh, European liberalism. So, today we are in the new conception of liberalism, which is brilliantly explained in Alexandre Duclos' Cours sur l'ordre liberalisme, in description two. In inflation, inflation hit Germany hard just before Hitler's reign, which means that money lost constantly its value. I will use the following example which takes place in Germany to introduce the idea of inflation. So if you were paid for your work at the beginning of the month, you could lose four times you initially pay at the end of the month. The prices increases four times. Each German asked to be paid twice a day. I will put a picture of this moment. It's unquestionably very shocking for people, and as the economists Walter Aiken and Franz Bohm said, never again. The birth of ordo liberalism happened after the Second World War in Fribourg, in Germany, around 1950, in a peer-reviewed academic journal created by Walter Aiken and Franz Bohm. Their thoughts where the marketplace should not be regulated alone, but need institutions to maintain its functioning. The first structure with, which could allow us is a state. But in this point of view, the only role of the state is to preserve a competitive and free marketplace. Okay, so the prefix ordo is very important because it's a term from Saint Augustine and showed us the profound religious aspect of this conception. We can illustrate this religious aspect by the sentence follow, as follow. To succeed, to allow the happiness, we need to work, e.g. to sacrifice. Identity is in applied rules which allow us to lie in a group the group of free, rational, and good persons. Thus, ordo liberalism was established in Germany and later in the European Union. The only role of a state or an institution is to maintain the inflation below the 3%, the golden rule of 3%. Indeed, keeping a, long in, a low inflation rate should prevent recessions like the one Germany underwent in the 30s. The first European policy has applied ordo liberalism ever since. One needs to add that the European Union is before all a technocratic place. There are neither elections nor election, a European population votes. Only experts can guid our European institution according to the ordo liberals. So I would like to talk about actual crisis with this frame of reference, but I haven't enough time. I hope that it was interesting and not too boring. Thank you for your listening and check uh, some references. Thank you.